All right, welcome to the blockchain section of my EOS development course. I'm kind of going to make the assumption that the majority of people taking this course already kind of know what a blockchain is. I'm guessing probably the majority of the people taking this EOS development course are previously Ethereum developers, so they're or, or they know what Bitcoin is, they kind of know what cryptocurrency is, so they probably have already done some investigation on their own as to, you know, what is a blockchain. Um, if that isn't you, you know, feel free to stick around and learn the very basics. Similar to the Intro to C++ course, I'm not really going to um, dive too deeply into this. I'll give you a very brief overview of what a blockchain is. Uh, this is kind of leading into another part of this section of the course, which will be like the differences between uh, EOS and Ethereum, but we kind of need uh, similar language in order to have that discussion. So that's what this video is for. Um, if you already know what a blockchain is, feel free to skip this video. Skip you know whatever videos you want, and only pick, only watch the ones you think are going to give you um, the most value in this course. So um, let's get started. I guess the way I like to kind of describe what a blockchain is. Um, to developers, like I'm assuming you're a developer, you wouldn't be taking this course, is from the perspective of Git because they're both um, decentralized software and they're both like kind of decentralized ledgers if you really think about it. So with Git, um, you have this initial commit, right? If, if In the very beginning of this course when I created that Hello World um, C++ program, we could have... Um, track that with git right we would have done a git init and we would have done a git commit uh, typically what what happens when it's the very first commit is the the person uploading the repo will say hey this is in the initial commit meaning you know there there aren't any changes from previously with which I need to explain in this commit message um, so let's say I make a couple changes I, I don't know maybe I decide I don't want to use namespace std and so I, I decide I'm going to scope it directly in in this this um, hello world program so we we make that change I do a git add I do a git commit right and so now we're on this this a block here essentially and I would add a commit message saying hey uh, I didn't want to use this namespace scope so I, I manually scoped these C out statements well when I make the commit Git has to know how to get back to the previous version, right? That's the whole point of Git is is its version control. So as you're making code changes, you can always go back to a previous commit and roll forward from there if you want. Um, the way it does that is it tracks the, the code changes that were happening in the block previous to that. It will take a hash of them, and that gives you kind of a unique identifier of, that, of the block previous to this one, right? So in this case, we would take a hash of the initial commit and that would give us a pointer back to the initial commit as we're making code changes. So likewise, you know, we go forward, we roll forward, we make another change, another commit to B, right? Well, now we have a hash of the A block, uh, which we can always, you know, jump back to. It's essentially a linked list, right? If you're familiar with that data structure. Um, what's uh, also kind of really helpful about using Git is you can switch to new branches, right? Like in this case, I have this this block C, like let's say rather than making the code change B that we made in the Hello World program, I decide I want to try and add uh, imports, a new import statement and to iterate through a vector, right? So I would make this branch here, like it looks like I called it feature A, right? So we have this new branch, feature A, and that also points back to the A block. So let's say we make another code change on that, now we have this block D, let's call it. D, the D block still knows how to get back to the A block, right? It just follows the pointer back from C back to A, and it knows all the code changes that happened along the way. Um, you'll, you'll also notice, like, look here, the hash, that's what these little hexadecimal numbers I put on each block pointer is essentially a hash of the previous block, right? The unique identifier. You also na notice here when I branched in the, C, in the C block, it has the same hex identifier as the B block, right? Both of these blocks know how to get back to A and they know how to get um, the code changes associated with that. So we move forward, right? This is our master branch as it's often called in, in uh, Git repo. Uh, I, here I'm showing like also you can do the same thing. As many branches as you want in a Git repo, you can make them. In this case, I made another one called bug, fi bug fix and it points back to the B, the B code block, the B commit, whatever you want to call it. 
I, I keep calling them blocks because I'm sure you can see where I'm heading with this, right? With a blockchain, like there, it's it's very similar to a blockchain, and that like the only the only difference is when you're doing a commit is you're storing code changes rather than transactions between two parties. Um, and another thing I like kind of like to explain when I'm when I'm explaining the blockchain in this context is like when you're doing a repo, you have a maintainer, right? There's like a main person who is in control of the branch or in, in control of the repo and as people are making pull requests they get kind of get to decide what makes it in and what doesn't make it in based on testing and all this other stuff well that's why mining exists right is we don't want one person to be able to control this repo for too long so there's some kind of like randomness and proof of work involved that means you know okay you've put in enough work we're gonna let you be the maintainer of the repo for the next block or so right so that's what, um, kind of the blockchain from a Git perspective. Here you see I, I've created this analog, right? The same exact um, Git repo we were looking at before, but instead of um, code changes and initial commits, we have the genesis block, and the hash the hash is pointing back to each block previous to that. And inside each of these blocks, rather than there being code changes and a commit message, right? There's actually transactions saying like, okay, Alice paid Bob. Bob paid Charlie, etc., etc. Right. So at any one point in any of these blocks, we can follow it back and see, okay, what happened in block 10 of the Bitcoin blockchain? We can see who paid whom, right? And that allows us to know, like in this block B, let's say block B is the most current block. We know we can know for certain who has how many Bitcoins at any one time, right? Um, so yeah, I, I think that's it. Again, like very much the same thing can happen in Git, right? Where you can have these branches. It's just in, in um, blockchain parlance, they call them a hard fork. So in this case, I'm showing here, like uh, up above, we had the um, what did I call it? The feature A branch, right? You can manually create as many features as you want. Well, here in the same way, you can create this this Bitcoin Cash branch if you wanted. So we have the Bitcoin Core core blockchain that's going and moving along processing transactions being mining blocks on top of it etc etc well here we're, we're, we're having a essentially a, a branch a hard fork whatever you want, want to call it and we're gonna call that that branch Bitcoin cash um, okay so um, that's kind of blockchain in a nutshell uh, obviously there's like a whole whole lot more going on here and there's tons and tons of resources online so if you know you you want to know more in detail about what's going on here uh, there's plenty of resources to go check that out I just wanted to give you kind of a brief overview that way when we start hitting the API for EOS you're not confused as to like what these hashes are when we're looking at uh, the JSON that gets returned things like that um, so again this video is kind of leading into a, another video that, uh, where I'll actually talk about Ethereum and kind of the breakthrough that the Ethereum team had with the blockchain and then also some of the drawbacks of the design choices that they made which will then lead us into you know why I think EOS is uh, yet another pretty big breakthrough okay see you in the next video